Welcome, it's indisputable, good to be with you. We have a lot of show today, breaking down news of the day. We got Adrian Lawrence, attorney at law, author and TYT contributor. Also in the bullpen, I got Pedro Gonzalez, associate editor at Chronicles, a magazine of American culture. We're gonna talk about the Rittenhouse trial and criminal justice overall. Top story for today, once again, the defense attorney for one of the killers who killed Ahmaud Arbery has said something else quite racist. Now, I want you to hear my conclusion at the end of this story because it may be different than what you have been thinking. As you recall, this defense attorney, Kevin Gall, he stood up and said he did not want black preachers to come inside of that courtroom anymore. I'm paraphrasing, but that's what he said. And then he mentioned the name of Reverend Jesse Jackson. Well, Reverend Jesse Jackson had never been in the courtroom. He was not there. And according to my sources, did not plan to come. But after this happened, he did, he showed up. And here's what the defense attorney said. He said, I object, how dare they bring Reverend Jesse Jackson in here? Here's what the judge said. What you're doing, uh, I have already ruled on this court's position with regard to the gallery. And um, with all candor, I was not even aware that Reverend Jackson was in the courtroom until you started your motion. Um, I have indicated the court's position, the court's position hasn't changed. Uh, at this point, it's almost as if you're just trying to continue this um, uh, for purposes other than just bringing it to the court's attention. And I find that objectionable from the court standpoint. Let me be the interpreter for Judge Timothy Walmsley here. Uh, judge is saying, uh, you see, I peep game. Why you keep bringing this up in my courtroom? I think you're trying to do something other than what you're objecting to. You see, I actually believe the judge is onto something when he said, this seems like something other than the objection. Now I want you to follow the timeline here. This defense attorney says black pastors should not be there with the family of the victim. Well, black pastors are now going to be there in huge numbers this Thursday. There's a coordinated trip. He then mentioned the name of Reverend Jesse Jackson, who was never there in the first place. Now, Reverend Jesse Jackson is there. And then he objects to Reverend Jesse Jackson being there. You see, when you object, you preserve the record for appeal. And I think that is the tactic of this attorney. Thankfully, we have an attorney on the show that can tell me if I'm absolutely 100% off basis here. Attorney Adrian Lawrence. Have you been thinking along those lines also at all? Yes, I definitely say that you are on point with this one. Where we have this attorney here, this defense attorney trying to essentially create this narrative that possibly could be used by the defendants if they're convicted and they need to appeal. And what that attorney is kind of hoping is that maybe there will be some appellate judges out there who will play into this racist rhetoric. This thought that having black pastors in the courtroom in some way, despite the fact that as the judge indicated, he didn't even notice if they were there or not. And so essentially all he's doing is dog whistling all day long and hoping that in the event that his clients are convicted, that he can dog whistle all the way to the appellate level. And it's just, it's really disgusting. And the good thing is this judge seems to be hip to the game. The judge is definitely hip to the game. But Adrian, this tactic may actually work. Mm -hmm. If there's a conviction, and we are hoping so, the appellate process may be different because you're right, in the appellate process, he could possibly find a very friendly judge to his case, just like the judge in the Rittenhouse case is very friendly to Rittenhouse. These judges exist. And at the appellate level, because of the discretionary of probative versus prejudicial, the appellate court can rule either way. 
Yeah, you never know necessarily what those judges will do at the appellate level, especially since what I find that this defense attorney is trying to really signal and to indicate is the thought that you have these black pastors who have been involved in movements where whether they've been peaceful protests or whether they've been involved in riots or whatnot, it's the thought that there will be social unrest and upheaval and that essentially the signaling of these pastors being present is a way to alert the jury that if you do not convict here that you are going to have problems in your communities, and that's what I see the message is trying to intimate. But really, it's based on ignorance because these mm -hmm. things are, it's by virtue of the fact that what we have here is a murder trial yeah. where a man was hunted down and killed like he was some kind of animal despite what is abundantly clear to be his complete and total innocence. And so the fact is that justice should be done. And also this is an open courtroom. Whoever chooses to attend should be able to attend as part of the public justice system. And we the people having our right to play a role in the process. Let me shift gears to General Michael Flynn. General Flynn, former NSA advisor to former President Donald Trump, who has admitted to being a corrupt individual. He told the FBI, yeah, I'm guilty, I did it, I'm corrupt. He now says that the United States of America should have one religion. That religion should be Christianity. Here it is. And, he's and they're talking about the United States of America. Talking about the United States of America, because when Matthew mentioned it in the Bible, he wasn't talking about the physical ground that he was on. He was talking about something in the distance. So if we are going to have one nation under God, which we must, we have to have one religion, one, one, one nation under God and one religion under God, right? All of us together, working together. I don't okay, so a few things are problematic with his statement. Number one, he doesn't believe this. You see, Michael Flynn cannot, cannot get a check outside of QAnon. Nobody will give this guy a serious job. So he is on the QAnon speaking circuit and absolutely nothing else. He knows that, he needs to still make money. So he says things that connect directly with the QAnon base, number one. Number two, I find it quite ironic that he would spew something like this, knowing good and damn well he could not live under a theocratic government. See, a theocracy would say it's illegal to lie. You see, that would destroy all of them immediately, all right? So Michael Flynn is saying this, he's on this tour with QAnon, and he is promoting this one religion in the United States of America. Maybe he wants an official religion, but here's what's going to happen. They are going to dangle this carrot in the, in the face of conservatives. This is the new red meat, and we've seen this happen before. This is just a political ploy. Now there's going to be a segment of this movement saying, we want Christianity declared the official religion of the United States of America. And people like Michael Flynn and others, they will say, "Oh, absolutely, all you gotta do is vote us in. Vote in the people that believe like us and voila, we will do this for you. Even though it's contrary to the actual US Constitution. Let me be clear to answer that issue. The US Constitution is a wholly secular document. It contains no mention of Christianity or Jesus Christ. In fact, the Constitution refers to religion twice. In the First Amendment, which bars laws respecting an establishment of religion or prohibiting the free exercise thereof. And then in Article 6, which prohibits religious test for public office. Both of these provisions are evidence that the country was not founded as officially Christian. And many of what we deem to be the founding fathers practice what's called deism. All right, Attorney Lawrence, what are your thoughts? Well, I think this is another reach, as you mentioned, with Michael Flynn trying to make money by virtue of the fact that he is 
probably largely insolvent. Um, you know, it's just really sad seeing what these people are willing to do to our democracy. And knowing that they have essentially a lot of followers who aren't necessarily thinking that well or for themselves. And we also know that the fact is to have a theocracy in our nation, it would completely undermine this idea of our democracy. And it would be um, essentially what the founding fathers were trying to get away from, arguably, when they came here and built this nation. It's just, it's unfortunate that we see individuals like Michael Flynn using their power to essentially corral the ignorant to really push this agenda. And what's going to happen is that many inside of this movement, they will start believing that somehow they should now push for a one country religion and that will save the nation somehow. And it's it's just so it's not even authentic. You know, I, I don't besmirch people's religious beliefs. But these guys typically don't believe what they say. All right, they're manipulating others. Do you think at any point, Adrian, QAnon followers will get hip to the game that these cats are running on them? You would like to think so, but I think a lot of them are not necessarily fully plugged in until they start suffering some severe consequences. Mm. As we've heard from a number of people who are facing charges or have been convicted with the January 6th insurrection, they really start realizing that Trump isn't there for them. I think it's a similar yeah. thing with QAnon, where they have to start getting those consequences to come in before they realize that this isn't necessarily the right thing to do. Okay, totally unrelated, but I thought it was fascinating. Uh, the juice is loose. OJ Simpson, okay? OJ Simpson was at a bar having a good time. Now, I believe OJ is a killer. That's what I believe personally. You may disagree with me, and that's fine. I think he either killed those people or he was involved. That's just where I'm at. And then he gets arrested for stealing his own stuff. What an idiot. Now, we had the Me Too movement. We know that women's of space, at least people like OJ should know this, that the space of a woman should be respected. And then this happens. Here it is. You know, if I was a white woman next to OJ Simpson, I would have had that same look of complete horror on my face if he leaned in on me. If any white woman runs away from OJ, I would dare say they're not racist. That's understandable. <laughs> Adrian, I just had to cover it. He he does all of these blogs and he goes on his uh, social media rants on Twitter. Uh, you know, he's out here living his best life. Like I said before, I think the guy got away with murder, so I don't have much love for him. Uh, what are your thoughts here? Oh, I feel the same way you do. Uh, the audacity is surreal. Yeah. Uh, seeing him lean into that woman just to, you know, get a little kiss on. It's like, come on, bruh, you are a known abuser, and arguably, you've got, you know, a few murders um, in your back pocket going on here, whether you're convicted of them or not. And so it's just. It's weird that he doesn't realize how fortunate he is to even be walking free. But to see him actually essentially disrupt women's spaces and lean in the way he did, this man is never gonna get it. Yeah, and you, you gotta realize that his narcissism is clinical. And I didn't think of this until he wrote the book, If I Did It, right? And then outlined how he actually did it, but the issue is, this guy is likely going to be incarcerated again. I mean, I would put good money that before OJ expires, he is going to go back to jail. Am I just too far off here? No, I don't think you're wrong. He's not getting it. He's all, and he also already went to jail for that robbery charge. So it's yeah. like the man clearly doesn't get it. And he's just pretty much unapologetic, audacious, egregious, and it's just a matter of time. Yeah, so we'll see. And I, his commentaries are insane. He does a lot of pontification about politics and sports and social issues. And he has a really strong following. Now, many people are following him and laughing at him, not with him. 
and they do continue to remind him that he is a killer on his social media pages. So, you know, he puts himself out there like that on a regular basis. I guess he's okay with the attention. All right, we got more on the other side. It's indisputable. Stick and stay. Welcome back. Okay. Don't forget, Indisputable is available on podcast, okay? Um, you can go right now to Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Podcasts, wherever you listen to podcasts, search for Indisputable with Dr. Rashad Ritchie, click follow and rate us with five stars. As I've said before, some lame gave me one, okay? So we need to show up in abundance here. If you like the program and give us five stars, all right? Um, uh, don't forget, big announcement, TYT is looking for you. If you can write, produce, host, and edit short form editorial videos on breaking news with a progressive point of view, Rebel HQ, we're looking for content creators. We'd love for you to join the team. If you want to apply, go right now to tyt.com forward slash careers, tyt.com forward slash careers. All right, let's get to the comments. Bonnie Allen says, "Oh, you mean like the Taliban? To have the religious that that's right. That's exactly what Michael Flynn means." Okay. Uh, Mickey C. the Silverhead Dragon says, "Flynn furthering the fact that Republicans don't follow the Constitution, right? Just like they're evangelical Christians, they use the Bible and the Constitution to condone their hateful, violent beliefs and ignore the parts that condemn their actions." Yep. And I've always wondered, those who are so, let's make the Bible and the government the same. Why have they never produced legislation to make lying illegal? Or to make adultery or fornication against the law? If you're gonna do it, lawmaker, do it all the way here. Don't pick and choose. Smurphy says, he was a three or four star general, that is frightening. That's a frightening thought, someone like him was so far up in our military, yeah. He's not the only one. Forbzilla, can we have this judge be the judge in the Rittenhouse trial? He seems a lot more competent, he really does. I mean, the contrast, Adrian, you're an attorney, you've been in front of many judges. The contrast is really night and day here, right? Oh, it's stark contrast, it's wild right now. But the good thing is a lot of America's watching. So they can yeah. see essentially the range of our judiciary. That's right, that's right. Uh, Nana Nikki says, Flynn took an oath to uphold the Constitution of the United States. I don't know if he's still considered retired and drawing a pension, but he should definitely be stripped of all military recognition. You would think that once he said that he was guilty of corruption, that the military was, all right, we gotta get those things back. So I hope. Um, I think this is Director Four. Defense is basically saying, I can't find any good standing people to publicly sit in solidarity with my clients cause they suck. <laughs> yeah, Coach RJ, <clears throat> this is how schools failed us. Do we, do we now, do we know why those whites fled to America when they did? Uh, LOL, to get away from religion. I know it's, it's so, it's really a simple lesson. They were leaving the guys that Michael Flynn is. <laughs> That's what was happening. All right, Ricardo Chucky. <laughs> uh, OJ, she just wanted a story for the gram and got more juice than she wanted. That's it, she was just trying to get likes on the gram. Juice is loose, you gotta be careful. Somebody may need to check on her. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, Kev Z247, she ain't trying to be the next victim. No, that's right. <laughs> I, I, that's why I said if I was a white woman, I don't play with OJ. Please don't play with OJ. This is a warning to all white women out here. Do not play around with OJ Simpson. Okay, uh, Kyle A315, the judge is definitely better uh, than the Rittenhouse judge. Uh, but that's a low standard, it, it really is a low standard. But yes, the contrast is there. Uh, Wizard McCoy says, so Flynn wants to rewrite the constitution now. I thought they always quote the constitution when it's their rights they view being violated. Boom, but remember, it's the same thing with their Bible, right? They quote the parts that they feel supports the argument, same thing. Egypt five, 
If I was a white woman next to OJ, <laughs> I would I would stop being one of those two things. <laughs> I would stop being one of those two things. And the easier one is the one involved with location. <laughs> that was that was that was funny. I appreciate the laugh today. All right. Ladies and gentlemen, I wish a Karen would. You want to call the police on them for having a barbecue on a Sunday? I'm going to tell them there's an African-American man threatening my life. Call cops! Somebody call cops on this Call cops! Call them! Call them! Get out of my face. Call cops! 911 now! Victor, get my wallet! Call cops, bitch! Call cops! Call them! 911! For what? Four eight five. Call cop. Are you okay? Call cop. Stupid sight. Call a cop. Call a cop. Call a cop. Yeah, you call a cop. Oh, why aren't you calling? Victor, give me my phone. Bitch, give me my phone. Cops. I'm calling the cops on this. He's recording me. Yeah, uh, yeah. He's I like to, to hit report me. domestic violence. He literally tried to hit me. Not he literally was, me and hit me for no reason. I have no idea who he is. Maloney. I thought he was freaking out at his boyfriend. Yeah. I was just walking to my car and then he came up to him and he spit on me. And then he and then he pushed me and hit me in my shoulder and he just so called me. He's been saying the N word to her the entire time. Guy hit her. Yeah. yeah. I wanted to see what was going to happen when that fella jumped that fence. But we don't have that video. Maybe we'll get it. I'm requesting it. Okay, uh, this particular male, Karen, was screaming the N word, was singing the N word. I have never seen that before, by the way. I've never seen somebody literally hold a tune while just saying the N word over and over again. But this is a first for me. Uh, we've identified him. Let's put his picture up. He obviously, obviously likes to perform, he wants to be famous. We will oblige. He has been identified as San Diego resident Nathaniel Maloney. He would eventually be handcuffed by police. Maloney's Facebook profile revealed a very profane graphic attack on President Joe Biden as his last post. I will give you one guess as to who he supports for president. All right, Adrian, what are your thoughts here? Uh, you know what, it seems really scary to be in that situation, to not know that person, to yeah. not know why they are coming at you, but they are unleashing all sorts of just tomfoolery, nonsense and ignorance, and especially an individual of that size. So I really feel for that woman and I'm glad she was able to record it. And I too would very much like to see what happened after that man jumped <laughs> the fence, cuz he looked like he was ready for something. And there might be a reason we didn't see the rest of that footage, cuz yeah. who knows. Um, but still, like these people out here, you know, we should not be giving them uh, kind of that benefit of the doubt when it comes to the thought of maybe they are inebriated, intoxicated or have mental health issues. No, I think a lot of these people have chosen this route. And this is the direction that they're going, whether or not we think it's logical. The fact is that they're choosing this and that they need to be held accountable. You know, it is interesting, Adrian, what we are finding as of late. Cameras or the smartphone recording a person's action no longer shames them into straightening up their behavior. The reason why the phone typically starts recording is not to document, it's for safety. Yep. Because there was a time when that record button would be hit and the person would go the other way. That person would try to hide their face. Why do you think this massive shift has taken place to where nobody or at least people that exhibit this level of Karenicity, they do not seem to care that they are being recorded in this moment. Well, I think that there has been a drop in the bar in terms of etiquette, etiquette mm -hmm. and people really caring about the reputations and opinions. You know, what we saw with the Trump era is the fact that he can have himself and many others out there essentially engaging in like racism, all sorts of sexism, and just saying things that are just utterly offensive and disgusting, yet they still stay on top and they still continue to do fine. So people are seeing this, and I think that they're thinking the same thing will happen to them that, oh, I'll survive. It'll be perfectly fine. And maybe they become a hero because remember, we saw this was before 
um, some of these exhibitions started. We saw people who clearly were, um, who ki- clearly killed unarmed black people, right? <laughs> and then after the video comes out, they get a GoFundMe that raises $300,000, $400,000. So they become a hero, right? You got people that are praised for, for killing unarmed black people or for saying the N word publicly. Uh, and these individuals become stars to a certain segment of American society. So I think part of it is exactly what you said. And then there's this other part where there's a crowd that will celebrate them in their insane racism against somebody else. Yep, yep, they are doing it for the likes, the clicks, and the fact that they think they will be just fine in the aftermath. And the problem is, is that too many people are enjoying that kind of legacy right now, where they've said all sorts of things on camera, and they are uplifted, and they do just fine. Yeah, and that's why people that employ others, you have to really, really enforce those morality clauses. Because typically, every job you work for has a morals clause. And that means that what you do outside of your job, if it brings a reputation issue back to that job, you can be let go, right? So we need to make sure that employers are stepping up and doing what they're supposed to do here. Okay, you know, Adrian, have you ever went to a play and it was not as good as you wanted it to be? Uh, yeah, yeah, I think so. You know, it happens, yeah. right? I've been to a movie. Yeah, I don't a really movie, do definitely. Plays, right? <laughs> but, you know, I've been out, thought the thing that I was going to see would have been better than it was. You know what I didn't do? I didn't do this. Double dose. You want to call the police on them for having a barbecue on a Sunday? You're going to feel free. Back off. I'm going to tell them there's an African American man threatening my life. I wish I had a life to where I could get upset about some things that upset white people. I mean, if what offended me was somebody who did a bad, I don't know, Shakespeare play, a parody of it, and it got me that angry because that's just the worst thing you can do based on my experiences, exposures, and environments. That would be a remarkable privileged life. Uh, but I have to get upset about things that are connected to me and my community, quite different. Uh, so this person decided to give um, her bad review. This Karen gave her review of this particular play in real time. Um, and then decided to go racist by saying, you know, go back to your country. Which seems to be a default line by many Karens when they're upset about random things. Did you see the same here, Adrian? Oh yeah, you know, that individual, I do not necessarily know what her issue was. But by virtue of the fact that that was her response, that tells us that she has a lot of audacity. And I do hope she was arrested for her behavior and the disturbance, because it is very disturbing for people around you. If you are holding this racist sentiment, this ethnocentrism and this xenophobia, at least take it outside. But you need not interrupt other people's enjoyment of entertainment. It may not entertain you, but go find something that does, like a Klan rally. (laughs) <laughs> that was hilarious. And you know, we have gone away from the days of calling corporate, speaking to a manager. Remember Karen's would do that? I made this, I mentioned yesterday. Like that used to be the the level, the height of Karenicity. Uh, and maybe you get an email, maybe they go on the five star review page. Uh, but now this is happening and we will see if there's a follow up to it. We have no information that this person has been arrested, but remember, Adrian, 
Just a few days ago, there was another Karen on a comedy club stage decided to go up to the stage during a comedy routine because she was offended. Well, I'm going to comedy shows. Honestly, some jokes actually did offend me personally. I never thought that I should go on the stage and stop the comedy set. Now, here's my question. What do you think she would have done if the management and security did not intervene? Was she going to take the microphone? Like, what, what's, the, what's the end game here? What's the goal? I, I don't think she had fully fleshed that out in her <laughs> mind, but I definitely could you know, see her on stage. And I don't know if she would have taken it uh, to another level, made it her own pulpit and given her sermon. But she has some serious issues because you can always leave. You can always not patronize that institution, that establishment, that event. That is how you should show your disgust or your you know, lack of appreciation for whatever content they're putting out. You shouldn't necessarily get up interrupt it, scream, and essentially embarrass yourself in your family name. Yeah, very well said. All right, we got more on the other side. It's indisputable, stick and stay. Welcome back, okay, we got a lot of comments, let's get to it. TYT member, Mickey C the Silver Hair Dragon. I moved out to the boonies 40 years ago. And other than when I had to work, I became almost a total hermit. How could I have known that it would become a necessity with all the loonies out there? <laughs> Imploded Brandy says, uh, boy, back to your country while watching a play that originated in another country. What the great American healthcare famine says, holy cow, Dr. Richie, that is an all timer Karen. Rarely do you see a public display like that in the theater. You know, we really do need to have like, who's that guy that does the National Geographic uh, voice. We need to hire that guy to narrate Karens in the wild in their natural habitat. And we're just observing them. And then uh, here comes an anti Karen. Let's wait to see what happens here. I miss that. Okay, super chat. Um, I think this is Tracutian. Forgive me if I said it wrong. I had a Karen come out of her house to yell at me at my. And to yell at me and my 11 month old baby for letting the dog pee on the bush <laughs> next to the sidewalk on public land. <laughs> I, I could just picture that happening. I know that happened to you, I'm sorry that happened to you, poor thing. I hope the baby's okay. Burn the Kiwi Dragon, don't let her know Shakespeare has been translated into clean on. <laughs> uh, all right, uh, Dark Angel. Uh, three, uh, my bro came up with a good one this morning. Come on, everyone, sing along to the Chia Pet theme song. Ka ka ka, Karen. I like that. Nice. Last call says, need the rest of the video. <laughs> we do. Um, Big Week says he was river dancing while saying the N word. He, that's what it was. He was river dancing while saying the N word. You know, there's some things that just bring a lot of joy to people, and obviously, him saying the N word. Just really set his soul on fire. Cheryl Parker, wow, Shakespeare is rolling in his grave. Jax Drax, I'm sick of harassers and abusers crying, act like they are the victim. Uh, Self victimization is strong in the hateful bullies of the world. I concur. Let me take you to a very sad story. I felt so bad for this woman who literally was kicked out of a church because they thought she had marijuana when it was actually what cilantro, it was seasoning. Here's part of the video. That's messed up, bro. Y'all are people of God and y'all's gonna do that? You have to leave gonna do that? Y'all's gonna do that? Y'all are people of God and y'all's gonna do that to me? You're gonna bring drugs in here? That's the cilantro, that's for the food. That's for the menudo, that's for this, look. I promise you, that's menudo. It's for this, look. That is a uh, original or whatever. That's that. That's that's for this. That's that weed. That's for the menudo. Ask anybody in there. You need to stop. Sir, I promise you, that's for the menudo. You can smell it. That's the food. Smell it. I promise you. I'm not, I'm I'm not like that. Like I'm not like that. That's why I'm so mad. 
I'm not like that. Look, smell it, ma'am. It's for the food. I think we've already asked you to leave. Just go ahead and go. I mean, I'll leave, but he, just so you okay. could confirm it. I'll leave. I'll leave. Just so you could confirm it. It's for the food. Smell it, ma'am. What is it? It's for this. It's, it's for this. Hey, it's I for the menudo. Lady, can you just please smell it? No, I am calm. It's just they tried to say that it was something. Hey, listen to me. Listen to me. I'm right in the middle of the sermon. I'm the pastor, so you're disrupting yeah, me. Yeah, it's because they're trying to Chill, say. chill, 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 chill. chill. Is that made your, me want to chill, cry. Chill, 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 chill. Is this your food? You're trying yeah, to bring it in? Yeah, they tried to say that I brought marijuana, but it's for this. It's the original. Chill, 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 chill. You understand? I'm right in the middle of the sermon. Yeah, really I understand. I know. So but what I'm just, asking you is to instead of showing of me and telling me. Yeah, no, 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 no. I just asked everybody to stop right in the middle of my sermon. So I'm asking you to just, just. I am. Yeah, that was just chill. wrong for them to do no, that. No, 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 like, no. It's a policy that I said. It is. It is. It's but a you could have smelled it. Little, 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 what I'm asking you to do right now is to pause, and then you and I are going to discuss this after okay. this, okay? So just pause, all right? I, I feel so bad for this woman having to explain her food because of the assumption that she's bringing in drugs to a church. It's seasoning. And then when they realize she's right and they are wrong, oh, you still need to get out. You're being loud. Leave. We told you to leave already. We don't care that we're wrong. Go, leave. Then the pastor comes out. He's good at what he does, but he's the same guy. He's the same person as them. Who do you think trained them? He did. They are a reflection of his leadership. He's just better at it, making it seem like he's the common voice of reason. He's the one who said, no, I have a policy. The hell are you talking about, preacher? You have a policy against cilantro? You should have a policy that looks somewhat like you giving a damn about the least of these. That's what your policy should say. I mean, I'm sorry you had your sermon interrupted. I'm sure you were preaching real good about white Jesus and all of the values and all of the great, great things that God would do for people and how we should love humanity. And then you come out. And you do this to a child of God who has been criticized by members of your congregation, I'll be damned, preacher. And that's not it. Here's more video. I bring my daughter here all the time. Why would I do that? She's a girl, she's wet, was not seven. Excuse me, can I get my food back? I don't have it. So y'all just throw it away? I didn't do anything with it. I Can you ask him? Because that's for my food. That's what I put on my food. That's how I eat it. That's like the... Oh, I think I think my husband has it. Can you ask him if I can have it back? It's you can no, ask him. Have it back. Well, it's my food. I, I literally trying to give you Sorry. all the time, you know? I know, but it's... I don't have it tested. And oh, you could do that, but I, it's my food. If you want it back, we can call the police. I mean, it's food. He's around there somewhere, and I think he's gone. Okay. So. You heard him. You can't have it back. We're going to have it tested. If you want your food back, call the police. They stole this woman's food, accused her of bringing drugs into the church, which she absolutely did not do. When they realized they were wrong, instead of actually admitting to their failure, to be sensible, they decided to double down and still say, you have to get out. And they called her lady, lady, you have to leave, lady, you have to get out. The lady has a name, her name is Ashley, Ashley Antiveros. Ashley said she was upset at how she was recently treated by members of Redemption Mission Methodist Church, 1320 North Pennsylvania. Let me say that again. Redemption Mission Methodist Church, 1320 North Pennsylvania. That's who stole her food after accusing her of bringing a bag of marijuana to the church when it was actually a bag containing cilantro and oregano. The woman told KOCO Channel 5 that the bag also contained limes and onions. Huh? Yeah, she was bringing food there because that ministry is connected to a jail ministry. 
And she was bringing food there to share with her sister, an inmate who attends the church service at Redemption Mission. The church claims that it was against their policy to bring food to people. But that's not what that argument was about, was it? The argument was that she had marijuana and she never did. Adrian, things like this really piss me off. Absolutely, and I just felt so much anger. And you know, the fact that this woman who is trying to participate in these Christian activities is confronted with the most unchrist like behavior, yeah. where she is essentially being judged. This is unconscious, but we're conscious bias at play, essentially associating what she has as being drugs as opposed to seasoning. And I know there's a great joke out there with the thought that, you know, these people cannot recognize seasoning when they see it. But at the same time, what they're doing is essentially changing this woman's life because to be accused of bringing drugs, especially from people who preach this ministry, that's very, very, very hurtful. It is damaging beyond belief. And for them to have maintained that mentality, even after they knew they were wrong, this yep. tells you these people are not Christ-like, nor should they be in any kind of position in which they are in. And this is just, it's disgusting. Yep, well said, all right, let me show you another person who should not be in their position. What if I told you there was a cop, an actual police detective who went to a strip club and decided to skip on the bill owing a whole lot of money. That's not it, it gets deeper. This is a Baltimore police detective who has now been charged with theft, assault and destruction of property after attempting to leave a strip club without paying his tab. The detective's name is Robert Burns, Detective Burns. A 27 year veteran of that department was charged as police say he tried to leave Chez Joey on the block, the city's red light district on Baltimore Street without paying after midnight early Sunday morning. Okay, this guy's already a piece of work. Charging documents state that a bartender at the bar alleged Burns and retired officer Brian Hake did not pay their tabs, which totaled more than $1,000. Hake and Burns both joined the department in 1994, they're buddies. See the record show, when a fellow officer approached Burns and Hake to pay their outstanding tabs, charging documents state that both of these cops refused, with Hake claiming he already paid his. Burns then tried to violently push his way through the officers and out of the establishment. And he ripped the jacket of one of the cops. Now, why is he acting like this? Because he's pulling rank. He's a detective. How dare you approach me about not paying my tab, right? He doesn't care about the industry or the women that have worked all night. I don't moralize against those who are in the industry of exotic dancing. Okay, it's a profession for, for many. Uh, but this cop, this is a dirty move here. Everybody should agree, all right? Um, get out of my face, I will destroy all of you. I mean, he sounds like Denzel on training day. Get out of my face, I will destroy all of you. Burns is alleged to have said while pushing through the group of responding officers. One of the responding officers eventually pointed his taser at Burns. Charging documents state threatening to use it if he did not comply and telling him he'd be arrested if he left the club without paying. And then Burns told him, I'm calling your bluff. Well, he was right, they did not tase him. When Burns got outside, they arrested him. He is currently being charged with second degree assault theft and destruction of property. They're doing the hide and seek thing with this cop's photo. So I don't have a picture of Detective Robert Burns, but I got a picture of his boss. Let's put his boss up here. Baltimore PD Commissioner, he's the man in charge, buck stops with him, Michael S. Harrison. All right, um, quite insane here. Not only did he skip out on this tab, he probably did not intend to pay it at all, which is a crime by the way. And he then commits assault on police officers. Uh, what are your thoughts here, Adrian? 
Well, I think these individuals thought that they were above the law. And the fact is that these individuals who are working in this establishment are hardworking people and they don't yep. deserve to be treated this way. And not we could all. expect that the officers would not be doing this at Macy's. So mm -hmm. why do they feel that they can do this at this establishment? And it also makes me think that they probably abused their positions of power before. Yep. And you know what? I. I really know that these departments, they need to do more to crack down on this. Because what those officers probably did was think that these that the individuals working at this establishment weren't worthy of protection, that society wouldn't care. And thus they can exploit, take advantage of them, do whatever they want. And those are the people that need the most protection because of mentalities like that. That's right, and don't think this is isolated. Don't think they're just bad guys at the strip club. Don't think they just fight and commit criminal activity. Uh, at a strip club and theft at a strip club, this is connected to their core character. All right, I got a question. What in the red state hell? You can take a gun, shoot somebody in the face, it's not hard. Sometimes it might even be fun if they're a godless commie. Now, what they're trying to do is sneak the COVID vaccine in your salads. I never had, I hate math. Somebody say amen. Why don't white crime is getting out of control in this country? Agent, what are your thoughts here? Uh, yeah, I, I think these people have a problem. Like, what is going on? Why do you? <laughs> the it's a groundskeeper at the dog park. It's like, what level of low have you hit? Uh, you know, as much as I want to say, do not blame this on mental health, do not blame this on alcohol <laughs> or abusive substances. I just think that people don't know how to act coming out of this pandemic. I really am starting to think that people, they, they need more going on in their lives because this, this is real something. This ain't, this ain't gonna work, it's not gonna work. Yeah, yeah, they need to go back home. Yeah. Um, <laughs> thank you so much, Adrian, always a pleasure having you on Indisputable. But tell people how they can follow you. Well, you can follow me on Twitter at Adrian Law, on Instagram at Adrian Lawrence, and also you can check out my videos on Rebel HQ, where I'm dropping my legal knowledge on my segments Overruled. And should you want a great book on essentially how to make sure you stay on top in the workplace, check out Staying in the Game, the playbook for beating workplace sexual harassment. It is out in the TYT store as well as everywhere books are sold. Beautiful stuff. Thank you so much, sister. We appreciate you. Okay, let me read some of these amazing. Comments. We got a lot of them. I will get to as many as I can, okay? Um, Electric Miscellaneous says, she didn't bring marijuana, she brought cilantro. They thought she wanted to use it to get baked, but instead she just wanted to use it to bake. I see what you did there. Make it see the silver hat dragon. Uh, I'm in the middle of my sermon, and you being wrongly accused isn't nearly as important as me talking. The only one disrupting the sermon is the ignorant who accused her of bringing drugs. To the church. Well, you would think a Christian pastor would have some level of sympathy for somebody who has been wrongly accused. You know what I mean? Remember, the conversation is next. Take care of yourself, take care of each other, take care of the planet. Remember, the truth is always indisputable. Welcome to Indisputable. 
I'm your host, Dr. Rashad Richard. We got a lot happening today. But what do we do on this show? We tell the truth. You know why we tell the truth? Because the truth is simply indisputable. Rashad, great to be here. Congratulations on the new show. And I gotta let everybody know that Rashad and I go way back. Here's the pattern that we see in all of these Karen stories. They think they own stuff they do not own. Now, where does that come from? I don't know, maybe slavery. Maybe they think they should still own black people. This is what happens when Karens weaponize the police. When you're used to privilege, equality seems like oppression. It hits you in a certain way when someone is holding you against your will, treating you like you're a criminal and you're an innocent person. This is something that black people face no matter where they are. A stronger black economy lends itself to a stronger, greater economy. Don't think it's exclusive of you, it's inclusive of you. What's your beef with critical race theory? It adds more fuel to the fire of the racist tendencies that we already have. We have a generation of problem solvers that can remedy the problem if they are properly taught what the problem is. You know who created redlining in this country? Mm -hmm. The white liberal. I, I, don't, I don't give a damn who created it. If it's well, a racist I'm, I'm policy, saying. racist policy. Shelly, That's here's what I don't know. I don't know. See, there you go filibustering, brother. You're scared of this truth, but you're gonna get it, though.